Welcome everyone one and all to my reaction to season one episode one of Percy Jackson and the Olympians now very excited to be getting into this I've been wanting to start this for weeks now I keep seeing it on my TikTok but I pushed it to the side because I knew that we had a poll coming up and you guys might be interested in watching it and safe to say I was correct <laughs> so I'm very glad that I pushed it off but yeah very excited now in terms of what I know I have seen the movies when I was a kid huge fan of the movies loved Logan Lerman to be completely clear he was a big childhood crush for me so that could have influenced me a little bit but I did really enjoy the films and the general discourse I've seen online is that the TV show is at least a much better adaptation of the books than the movies were but also I've seen people say that they do prefer the show over the movies already not just book lovers you know so very excited for that side of things I have also heard that it can feel a little bit because I'm not the target audience, let's be clear. It's targeted towards a younger audience. And even though you couldn't enjoy things of all ages, target audience does come into play when we're talking about stories and all of that. So I do expect it to feel a little bit like that. But then also, I don't mind. Like, I'm not someone who really cares if something feels a little bit kiddie. Like... I don't mind. It's a TV show. As long as it's enjoyable, I'm here to watch it, you know? And also, I've got a two-year-old niece. So, watching bloody Bluey and Paw Patrol all the time, I am prepared for anything that feels like a kid's show, you know? So, with that said, very excited to get into it and see how everything plays out. So, without further ado, let's go. Look, I didn't want to be a half-blood. Half-blood. Oh, yeah. That's what they call themselves. Being a half-blood. Demigod, isn't it? Yeah. Demigod. If you think... You might be one of us. My advice is turn away while you still can. Because once you know what you are, you'll sense it too. And they'll come for you. I mean, that advice doesn't really work. So if you know what you are already, then you can't exactly turn away. But <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> also, things will probably start coming back to me from the movies because I was obsessed with them. But I don't remember things right now, but it will definitely start coming back as we go on. That's me back in second grade. Why was I up there? <laughs> I saw something. I could have sworn I saw something. Huh? Good news. He's saying there's nothing to worry about. It's all in my imagination. I was literally about to say, I feel like when you're younger, they will just pin it on imagination. But as you grow up and this becomes something that is like very normal to you and it happens very often, that is when you will probably be get getting recommended to a specialist. And that will begin a journey that will be very unhelpful to someone like Percy because, shockingly, these things are fucking real. <laughs> so, real one minute, then the next. Yeah, intriguing. Hey, fellas, want to come here about the imaginary stuff I see? <laughs> it's not a thing you want to be saying. God, that'd be such a stressful thing to grow up with, wouldn't it? It felt good to talk about these things with Grover. You could almost believe they were imaginary. Bless. Weird, but... <laughs> Until the day that changed too. Until the day one of them decided to come for me. Oh, hell yeah. Let's go. They are not fictions. They are not fantasies. I remember something to do with this um uh, professor. I remember there was a scene in a museum, I swear. I want you to choose one of the subjects you see here. And Poseidon? Not just how it Oh, looks. yeah. I remember that from the films, isn't it? That, um... He thinks that he's dyslexic, but in reality, it's just like his brain. What was it? It's like his brain trying to turn it into the Greek alphabet or something. I'm probably butchering that completely, but I know that it's something to do with the, uh, like, another language is something that he would be able to read. It just, like, jumbles up everything else. That's me. Ah. That's who you're named after. Because he was a hero? <laughs> what makes you think he was a hero? Intriguing. Because he kills monsters. What makes you think that she was a monster? Hmm. Yeah. I like this. Not everyone who looks like a hero is a hero. And not every not monster is a monster. Like a monster is a monster. Hold fast, Percy. Brave the storm that was made to break us, for we are unbreakable as long as oh. we have each other. Oh, their relationship is so cute. Also, what a fantastic mother teaching her kids these lessons at such a young age, you know? Percy? Mom? <laughs> that was <laughs> that was freaky. <laughs> you will learn to control yourself. Do you understand me? Me? Do you understand me? He can't help it, Mrs. Dodds. Percy's special. Oh, fuck off. Classic little high school bully. When you're ready to hear what the gods have in store for you, they'll tell you. 
Yeah, without ominously being, I swear to God, this guy is um, I I don't know what he is. I don't know what his like role is or who like, I don't know who he is to Percy, but I know that he is not part of this world. I know that he is something else, but I can't for the life of me remember what. You'll be needing this. Hang on to that. It's a mighty instrument. I mean, I suppose a pen can be a mighty instrument. <laughs> Words can be very powerful. There are all sorts of schools of thought about what drives that kind of bullying. Childhood trauma, feelings of inadequacy. I love that so much. These like breaking down Nancy. Maybe it's time to do something better. You could make an appointment to see Mr. K. She's really good. I was thinking to. more like shoving Nancy in the nearest dumpster. Yes, I agree. I like that. Mm. <laughs> nah, fuck her up. Fuck her up, Percy. The fuck? First little instance of some powers coming through. Let's go. Oh, but he said once you know what you are, they'll come for you. Does that count? Guys, I'm so dumb. I literally just remembered about the fucking... Th I didn't know it was a pen. That was the problem. I remember in the movie, he gave him something that turned into a sword, but I forgot that it was a bloody pen. Okay. It was only a matter of time Ooh. before we found you. Oh, sick. I love that it's like, it's in the real world, but it's also something that they can't see. Uh. Oh, well, that was handy. <laughs> uh, intriguing. So he did physically move. Okay, th this is, it's a strange scenario because it seems as though... Percy can see things that other people can't see, but not just that. It's more so that he can, like, interact with the things as well within the same space as everyone else. So, like, what? They'll be seeing Percy, like, running around fucking fighting something, but they can't see what it is. Is that the vibe? Because, my God, they will think that he is going insane. Where's Mrs. Dodds? Percy, there's no one here by that name. Huh? What do you mean? But she was interacting with the other people earlier. I'm confused. Yet you have offered no explanation for how she ended up in that fountain. Other than... I, I pushed the bitch because she deserved it. I didn't touch Nancy. He is actually correct on that, though. <laughs> there was no physical contact. <laughs> Mr. Underwood, do you have anything to add? Yes. No. I do. Don't do it. Percy had told me earlier in the day that he wanted to get back at Nancy for all she'd done to us. You cheeky little bastard. Yes. That's crazy, bro. You would just turn on him like that? What is wrong with you? God, what a shit friend. Do you want to tell me what you think did happen? Yeah, he's fishing for information. You can tell me. I might just understand. Do you want to bet? <laughs> I don't need... Any more stories about how special I don't realize I am. They aren't helping. This is my ride. I'm going home. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's like heartbreaking to hear, you know. I don't need any more stories on how special you think I am. He'll find out soon, though. Hey, I need <laughs> plenty of fruit. Have you considered eating more fruit? <laughs> Bloody hell. Hey, Eddie. Sorry about that. I'm walking out. You're walking in. I should be apologizing to you. Oh, bless. I know that was meant to be comedic, but that's that's sad. Who is this guy? His dad? No, but it can't be his dad because his dad's bloody Poseidon, isn't it? Hello. Oh, it's um, I don't know if it's a stepdad or if it's just his mum's boyfriend. But I remember this guy being an absolute asshole in the film, like proper like abusive relationship kind of asshole. So this ain't gonna be fun to watch. A mom home from work. Oh, is that all you gotta say to me after failing out of school? <laughs> All right, if, but still, if you're gonna live under my roof, huh? You gotta live by my rules. Your roof? My mom is the only one employed here. Excuse me, I have a job. Where's it look like I'm doing right now? Watching TV. I love how I'm sitting here and he's like, <laughs> "What am I doing with my job right now?" And I'm like, "Watching TV," as if I'm not literally doing my job right now, watching TV. <laughs> but um, yeah, interesting take so far. He doesn't seem that 
bad like he seems fucking annoying let's be clear about that but he doesn't seem to the level of like abusive but i have heard that these are meant to be more book accurate so maybe this is more accurate to who the character was meant to be and the movies just took it down a route of being a little bit too harsh to try and get a dramatic effect i don't know what's she doing to be fair i will say sitting in the rain can sometimes be so freeing i'm really sorry i tried this time you know how hard i've been trying but this time it really wasn't my fault it really wasn't my fault i love her i love her so much he told me what he thinks happened with nancy bobo fit i told him i believe my kid it was a real short call oh i love her what a fantastic mother mr bruner called me too he told me about grover no oh. do you want to talk about it that must suck best friend turning on him like that i wonder if there was a reason behind it though because it? it felt very out of the blue but then he could have just been someone who didn't like to lie i'm scared Gabe. Oh. huh <laughs> Now, anyone expects me to get any work done. Oh, shut up. You know, I hate washing the <laughs> alone. So do I. Just make sure they put the hot peppers on my sandwich. Not if you're Oh, dad's my like God. Said, Please. You're so annoying. How the hell does she put up with this man? The fuck is going on here? So weak. So scared. I assume dream. Run away, little hero, before you get hurt. Damn. It was a dream, but when we're dealing with a fantasy world, was it an actual dream or was it some kind of vision? Right here. Oh, well, she's crying. On three. One. Two. Oh, you little bastard. <laughs> Can I just say for a moment, it is really sad when you look at someone of this age and you just see such pain behind their eyes. Like, you just see such... I don't know what to call it. It's like disappointment, but more so like disappointment in yourself. That's the vibe that I get from Percy, and it's just so sad to see. The actor's doing a great job of portraying that so far, though. I'm used to feeling weird. I'm used to the world feeling weird to me. <laughs> like a puzzle of half the wrong pieces. Been there, mate. It hasn't felt like daydreaming it's felt very real i don't know more real maybe and then we were at the museum and you saw something yeah she knows like I, I don't know if this is my movie knowledge coming in or just because i know well no yeah it is my movie knowledge because i know that something actually happens to her i can't remember what exactly happens to her but i know that something happens to her in relation to taking him to the camp i think they get attacked along the way i have this like vision in my head of them like running at the um the border to get into the camp and then something happens to the mum. so i do think that she is very aware of the world and obviously i feel like with how she's treated percy his entire life it will be easy to see that she is aware she's tried her absolute hardest to make him comfortable while also not making him feel crazy like she's never seemed to downplay his feelings and downplay the struggles he's going through she's more so tried to just help him through it as best as she can which is another point that can go to her being a great mother but i think that this scene might be a little hard for percy because if you find out that your mother's been keeping this secret from you for your whole life when your biggest struggle in life is that you've never never been able to understand why you have been so different that would be a very hurtful thing to hear and it would be something that would strain on their relationship a little bit so i hope percy takes it well but when your mother's telling you something like this how can you take it well you know what did she say to you what did she say to you wait a minute she how did you know it was she uh-oh do you know why we come to this cabin every year I come to this place every year because this is the place i met your father oh interesting i suppose uh, I just looked up on Google Maps. It's surrounded by sea. Makes sense. From the moment I first saw him, I knew that that I had never met a man like him before. Because he weren't no man, darling. Because he, he wasn't a man at all. Oop. He was a god. You fell in love with God? With God. <laughs> like, like 
like Jesus? Oh my god, oh Percy. <laughs> Mom, in those stories, I have told you about how gods and mortals would sometimes have Mom, children together, stop. children Mom. called demigods, and sometimes they are known as half blood. Yeah, so okay, demigod and half blood is interchangeable. That's what the monster called me. Mom. Yeah, okay. Once they reach a certain age and they begin to, to know what they are, yeah. They are, Terrible forces are drawn to them, driven to harm them before they can become strong enough to fight back. That's oh, okay, that's intriguing. So that's why they go after them imme immediately. Like when they first detect who they are, they go after them because they're not strong enough to fight back. But why do they go after them is my question. Like, what is the purpose of taking out the demigods? Is it literally because once they train, they actively go and kill the monsters. So it's kind of like going on the offense as a defense. Or is it just because they're monsters, it's what they do. Like, we just have to believe that these creatures are evil and they just want to kill people. So kind of makes sense. But um, yeah, okay. It's making a lot more sense why the mother has been so upset recently then. Because I remember something to do with her taking Percy to the camp and it being like this really big event because something happened like they were chased or they were attacked and i remember it being quite painful of a situation for the both of them and i think that the reason she's been so upset this past like 10 minutes is because she knows that she's gonna have to send percy to the camp and not see him which bless her heart does that mean that once they get to the camp they literally have like no contact with the outside world because it kind of feels like that's the vibe we're getting with her it's like she has to give up her child why are you telling me percy this? i know that this is hard to understand, but you have to believe me that this is real. But this is crazy, okay? I am not a god. There is something wrong with my brain. I oh, my boy, I'm so sorry that you've been led to believe that. I'm afraid something may be really broken about me. Oh, I'm so sorry. And I know for certain that there is no such thing as demigods. Who's there? Oh, that's, that's so sad. Wait, Mom. Ah. Night. He said we could all leave in the morning. Sorry, I'm early, but I okay, so this was more complicated than it seemed at the beginning. So, why did he get him expelled, though? Like, what would be the purpose of getting him expelled? Because they didn't want it to come out that he, like, threw her into the pool. Because, obviously, that's quite dodgy. And he was just trying to protect him. Or is it a matter of, like, get him expelled so that he could leave? Because if, if he just, like, up and left and went to the camp before being expelled the school would be like what's going on maybe even contact police i don't know but this all seems to be part of some big plan okay so something's coming grover. i know that what? sounds really bad grover. but the important thing is not to panic i'm not panicking grover right? i'm also definitely percy's panicking <laughs> grover why is there half a goat in your pants oh it's oh oh uh... uh, she didn't tell you about oh okay you didn't tell him about me you're early <laughs> okay, makes a lot more sense now. So the important thing is not to panic. We'll Too late for that. In the car. Let's go. Oh my god, okay, we're just we're just going. Bloody hell, Percy's really just been thrown into this, hasn't he? I'm a satyr. Oh, he's got little horns. I'm your protector. A satyr, you know okay. Protector? If I hadn't gotten you kicked out of school, you'd have never survived the night. I would chasing us now would have found you there easily. Oh, uh, okay, so it was more of a we need an immediate escape in case you get attacked. The mist kept her hidden even from us until it was too late. The mist? mist? What's a mist? The mist. It's the veil that hides the magical world from the human world. Ah. Camp is a sanctuary for half-bloods. A safe space where you can learn who you are and what the world is like on the other side of the mist. Mom, what else haven't we talked about? This will be goodbye, unfortunately, Percy. What the fuck? He, he is brutal. He's relentless. He's wearing underpants. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Why is he wearing underpants? <laughs> Everything has been training for what's still ahead of you. What's ahead oh, of the you? cards they were playing earlier. I didn't even make that connection. It was literally a minotaur with the fucking underwear on. Okay, so what? They made these cards to like teach him things? That is sick. God, the way they've gone about all of this in like subtly training Percy has been so cool. <laughs> I don't know how much a car's gonna go do against a Minotaur, my darling. I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh my Christ. To be fair though, hun, good job. 
I'll give you that. Good job. Grover, I am entrusting you to protect my son, my only child. Don't worry, Mrs. Jackson. Percy will be totally safe. I can't swear it. Swear it? Okay. Keep him safe from anyone or anything that comes for him that wants to do harm, that looks at him the wrong way. Do you understand me? I swear. I'm very intrigued about that because she was very insistent on him saying that he would swear it. Is this comes some kind of like magical thing or is it some kind of like satyr thing? Where if they swear something, they have to do it. Because like she made him say that. She was like, no, I don't want to hear any little bullshit. He'll be safe. Tell me that you will protect him. So interesting. I gotta go now, sweetheart. Go? What do you mean go? I can't go with you. I don't think she's allowed in, Percy. You are not broken. You are singular. Aww. You're a miracle. Aww. And you are my son. Their relationship is so cute. So cute. Hold fast. Brave the storm. I love you. Ah, That's so sweet. It's literally like, um, you know, like Spanish bull. What is it? Bull fighting? I don't, I don't know what it's actually called, but where you got the red thing to attract them. <laughs> Percy, careful, mate. Oh, shit. Damn. I don't know, though. You could take that two ways. You could take that as death or something magical. Because, like, uh, I was going to say that didn't look like... Like, for instance, if a Minotaur is going to kill someone, surely it would just, like, crush them. But then this is catered to a younger audience, so they wouldn't exactly want to show something like that. So maybe that was why they did it that way. It was kind of like a disintegration kind of thing. But I don't know. It looked magical in the way that it happened. So there could still be a chance. And it kind of... I feel like this would hit two birds with one stone. Because I feel like with a scene like this, you kind of need it to push the character forward. And it's going to be a really hard, horrible thing for them to get through to think that their mother's dead. But it would be rewarding storyline wise because it would let them get to a certain point that you want to when it comes to their training and everything and it would make him want to like push. But then also, if you then bring her back later on and it was some kind of magical element, then you kind of get both at the same time. You get her still being alive later, but then we also get this initial growth. Oh, hell yeah. Also, I love how the pen isn't even like a fancy pen that turns into a sword. It's a fucking ballpoint. Nice. God, the way that he's just like fucking going for it this quick. Percy, you gotta get up and run, Broski. I mean, to be fair, it is raining heavy right now. That's water. Ah, oh, he made a cut in the wall. To break it. Nice. That was sick, Percy. Bloody taking his own horn and killing him with it. Let's fucking go. Welcome to camp, Percy Jackson. That's the professor, isn't it? We've been expecting you. Oh, I recognize his voice. Is that the end? Oh, that was a great opener, but oh, okay. I was going to say it didn't feel like a full like 40 minutes. It's because it wasn't. Okay, so they do have a long end credit scene. But um, yeah, what a great opener to the series. I really liked that. So yes, there we have season one, episode one of Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Loved that opener. A lot of things came back to me in terms of the story. But I'm going to be honest, I don't quite know the story from this point forward, though. Like the first movie, I remember that initial like him finding out about the camp and everything. And I remember there being some kind of, I don't know what to call it, some kind of like trial in the camp where it was to do with them not necessarily fighting. It was more like, but it, I don't know what to describe it. It's like it wasn't an obstacle course, but then it wasn't them like just going at it and hitting each other with swords and that. It was like a competition kind of vibe. I remember something to do with that with the camp, but I, I also don't know if that was from the second film though. Because I remember that as well. But storyline wise in terms of the rest of it. I don't remember what goes on here. I know it's something to do with um, 
Zeus's stolen lightning bolt, isn't it? It's something to do with that, but then it turns out that Percy doesn't have it. But I don't remember the storyline around it. I don't know who has it, who took it, why they took it, and how Percy gets out of those accusations. But very excited to see all of that develop. Um, the thing with the mum, it's still very much up to interpretation. I don't know whether she is dead or not. I think that, like I said, it could be a cool point for a character to have that big loss so that they can push themselves to re like get revenge essentially and to avenge his mother and all of that but then also he has just killed the minotaur he has just succeeded in that so perhaps her being alive could be a bigger way for him to train like a bigger motivation for him in finding out that his mother is somewhere and he needs to go get her you know i feel like that could be a bigger push for someone like percy than just get revenge because i don't think he's that kind of person but yeah in terms of like the law and the world building really good like uh, introduction to all of that you know we heard about the mist and how that is the thing that clouds the magical world from the human world but i found it very interesting that someone like grover from the magical world could could also be affected by the mist is this a common thing or was this something that is very out of the blue i mean the way that grover was describing it it seems as though there is some kind of powerful entity involved in manipulating things at the moment i don't know who they are or why they're doing it but it does seem like Percy has some enemies behind the scenes so very excited to see that play out and see who it is and what their intentions are now we did get a little sneak peek at the end of someone called Annabeth and I'm pretty sure I might be wrong on the name but I'm pretty sure that that is the other female lead in the story so I remember when it comes to like the adventuring party it's Percy Grover and a girl and I'm pretty sure it's Annabeth so excited to meet her excited to get her vibe can't remember what god she is born from I know that it is a woman. I remember it being a woman, but again, I'm not too familiar with Greek gods, so I'm not too caught up on who the female gods could be. So to be honest, after this episode and before we watch the next one, I might actually look into them a little bit more. I might actually look into who they are and what their vibe is, because I feel like it's going to be important for the story overall to understand these characters and to have like a good background knowledge of them rather than just meeting them for the first time, you know? But anyway, though, with all that said, that was an absolutely fantastic opening of the series. Loving the vibe so far, and I'm very excited to see where we go from here. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I've left a link down below to my Patreon. We'll be able to find the early and uncut reactions to Percy Jackson and all all the other shows that I do. Also left a link to my Twitch, my Discord, and my socials, so be sure to follow them if you are interested. And yes, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.